Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is part two in the series on manufacturing at home, the Rimfire Steel Biathlon Target. In part one, we went ahead and cut out a lot of the rough shapes on the torch mate and just went over an overview of the whole project. If you want to uh, watch part one, you can click here and it'll jump back to that. Uh, but this is part two and I've got a bunch of stuff set up behind me here. What we're going to do, we're going to uh, talk about the post plasma cut parts a little bit. We are going to be, do a bunch of welding on those parts, but before we do that, we've got to get a bunch of holes in them. So that's going to be done mostly with the Whitney punch. And I will show you guys the little fixtures I made that mark the holes to use with the Whitney punch. And let's see here, what else? We've got to, um, we're going to do a little bit of machine on the Tor, Tor Mach. So we're going to uh, machine the leg holders and then show the fixture I made to weld the leg holders on first and we'll take it from there. So let's dive right in. You can see here I've got a bunch of inventory bins. Let's talk about those parts. So here are some bins of parts and these came off the plasma, but I have gone ahead and done a post-op on them. And you can see they've got a nice finish. This took me a little while to figure out uh, you know, because with plasma you will have a, a dross or rough edge around them and that I don't like that for a variety of reasons. And uh, you certainly don't want to have to touch each workpiece um, grinding it or, or deburring it. So what I figure out is a way to tumble them. So I actually just throw them all into a big industrial tumbler and let them bang against each other for about an hour and they turn out really nice. I've been, uh, I've been really happy with the uh, quality of the surface finish knocks all the edges off and uh, does the trick does the trick well so uh -huh. so that leaves me with my parts and guys like these need holes in them let's see here i got one that has a hole punched in it so that's a 3 8 inch hole for our shoulder bolt and i do that with my whitney punch and i to use the whitney punch i want a marker of where to punch so i built this little fixture quite simple and I even outlined it. Uh, if you don't have the black outline, sometimes you pick it up and you can kind of forget if it's been a few weeks which way it goes. So it just uses three dowel pins to locate the part. And then I've got two of these uh, center punches, which mark the 3 8 hole. And then this is a 1 8 inch hole that I use for the captive pin. These little uh, um, center punches are uh, quarter 20 threaded parts that um, come with this little insulation tool and you just stick it in there and thread it in like so. And uh, they're great. Now you do have to be careful. Uh, you do have to be careful. You don't want too much height uh, on them or you'll actually crush them. Uh, and, and that, you know, if you crush them, then they won't work anymore. You destroy the tip. So you only want them up, you know, maybe 10 thou or 20 thou. So it depends on the material and how hard you're hitting it. And then what I have found is instead of just drilling a straight quarter 20 hole is I drill that and then I relieve the top, you know, 150 thou with a larger bit. So if you do crush one, it's a lot easier to get a pair of pliers in there uh, to back it out because this little tool it comes with depends on the tip being intact. And if you've blown the tip out, you won't get it back out. Um, so that's my one little trick there. Uh, but this is actually quite simple. You just lay the part on like so. Take a hammer and smack it. And let's see if we can see on camera here. Yep. So you can see the hole right there and right there. And that's enough on the Whitney punch for you to use the tip to, uh, to smack that out, to punch that out. And then this one has to be drilled. Same thing for our reset bar bracket. Again, three alignment holes. Lay your piece on there. Some of these I've already punched. Nope, that one I haven't. So lay it on there and smack. And you've got two nice holes that you can use. There we go, for the Whitney punch. So let's do just that. Let's go set up the punch and we will bang through a few of these. Okay, I am down here. I've got the Whitney punch set up. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, this is probably the one thing I've got that's not really a home manufacturing tool. 
I mean, it's not because it's too big. It's actually, you know, weighs a few hundred pounds, but it's on a nice set of casters and it's pretty easy uh, to move around. It's just, you know, it's three phase and it's really an industrial piece of equipment. Um, I looked for one for quite a while and, and ended up getting a deal on it. I bought the uh, punch separate from the uh, hydraulic power unit. Um, and by all means, it, you're going to see this thing work here. If you do a lot of hole making, it is amazing. Or not even round holes, but shapes and square, uh, square, square cuts and so forth. Um, so I would highly recommend them. But um, it's, uh, you know, I think if you bought one new, I, I, I think they're, geez, like five or ten grand. Anyways, um, awesome little machine. Let's go ahead and uh, get some holes punched. Just like that. Uh, how cool is that? Um, I actually did a whole separate video on the Whitney Punch, which you can see clicking here where I walk through uh, how I use it. And then I made this custom stripper plate as well, uh, which I like a lot better than the standard factory one. They also sell a bridge one like this, but I think it was four or $700. So making your own is uh, the way to go there. So I'll make a few more of these uh, on camera and then uh, I'll make a few more of these on camera and then I'll bang out the rest and be right back. The other really, really great thing about using the punch press is the uh, the hole itself doesn't need deburred. Got a nice smooth edge on both sides, and even with a shoulder bolt, I found that it holds uh, a great tolerance. So it's it's even you know not only is it better than drilling because of the mess and the time and the need to sharpen drill bits, but uh, drills will end up walking on you. You can't drill to a reamed hole uh, precision level, in my opinion. And, uh, and you got to deburr it. So this is uh, an absolute winner in my book. So I'm going to bang through the rest of these and I'll be right back. Okay, got my bucket of brackets done. Uh, drilling out the quarter inch hole, just on a regular old drill press, nothing too fancy about that, so it won't bore you there. And got the uh, brackets done for the reset bar. Next, I've got to machine out the uh, pieces here that get welded to this plate, and those happen on this fixture plate, and I actually already did a video on this, so if you wanna watch that, you can click here. I may actually be changing the design of this later. I've had some thoughts on it, but um, it works for now. I think I've got a way to simplify it though. Anyways, uh, once I have those machined out, I will end up, as you can see, with a part like this. I just tap that captive pin in there. And then what I do is I put it on this little, uh, I'd call it a welding fixture, but uh, it's so darn simple, I'm not even sure that does it. I'm, I'm not sure that's uh, you know appropriate, but. Uh, what that does is it'll keep everything perpendicular in the correct spacing like so. We will clamp it down and we will tack on our, uh, we, were we will tack these on and they won't move on us. I've had great success with that working uh, just fine. 
Um, but actually, before I weld these on, I will, uh, we will machine this bar. This is um, 3 quarter OD, 3 eighths ID bar. We'll machine them down to about one inch chunks with a little set screw hole in them, and those are to hold the feet. And then the way I hold those in place, and I weld them first, it's a little bit trickier for me to weld the, the radius part to a flat stock. So what I do is I use this piece and just tap it down this in the um, workpiece slides over this bar and, it won't, and you can clamp it but it honestly doesn't move on you and that keeps it perpendicular which is obviously important given that it serves as the ground stake for the target itself and just tack it on both sides and then slip it over here and uh, we're making progress so let's uh, let me go machine some more of these and uh, I'll be right back I'm in between loading uh, a batch of these parts on the uh, fixture here and I want, I'm not going to talk about the fixture in this video because like I said the other video which you can click the link to here covers it but the one change I've made since then is I put a little spring in between the fixture and the clamp and it's really nice that way when you loosen the clamp you uh, it holds itself up and it makes it much easier and quicker to load and unload the parts so just wanted to share that. I will be right back after I finish up a batch of these. Okay, back at the mill. This time I've got that piece of three quarter uh, OD rod set up and I'm going to do something really stupid, which is I'm gonna try running this program for the first time uh, on camera. Normally, uh, normally I like to run something obviously and test it out and take it easy. Um, so we're gonna take a 30th ounce skim cut off the top to flatten one side, you'll see why when we weld it, and then we're going to flip it over, take another 30 thou skim cut off, and then we're going to uh, basically just tap in uh, some quarter 20 holes, and then we're going to use our center drill to engrave uh, one and a half inch interval lines, which we'll use on our bandsaw to cut these up into the little one and a half inch chunks for, uh, for welding onto the targets. So let's, uh, let's give this a whirl here. Okay, I've got a three quarter inch four flute carbide end mill set up. It's gonna take a 30 thou depth of cut and two, two width of cut passes across this. Yes, I've got three inches or so sticking out on each side of the vise. No, I don't care what you think. I think it's gonna be fine. I'm not worried about it if it's not. So let's see here. What else did I wanna tell you guys? Uh, I guess that was it. Let's uh, dive in. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to flip it over, take the same cut, and then I'll come back when we start to do the next op. Okay, I've got 30 thou taken off both sides parallel to each other. Let's go ahead and run our spot drill. Okay, now we will tap. I never, ever, ever, ever get bored of watching this. I think it's the coolest thing. Now I have been, um, I don't always use my coolant system with steel, especially when I'm tapping. I pull those lines up and I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, my new favorite fluid rapid tap on here. Uh, it's been working great. So um, let's make sure we're height's okay. 
<clears throat> yeah, it looks good. Uh, you can see too, by the way, uh, no flex at all that I can see or meaningful flex having that part extended out there a little bit. So uh, happy about that. Well, let's go. <clears throat> Beautiful, right? <clears throat> These spiral flute taps are my favorite too. Uh, on, they, they, they're they good because they pull the chip out, but uh, a lot of times I just buy them because I think they're the coolest looking tap. Maybe the coolest looking uh, cutter I've got in the shop. Okay, we're done. Let's pull, hop, pull this out, pull it off, and see what we got. Okay, a little burr on one of them. That's to be expected. Um, but look at that. Not half bad. Let's, uh, let's go throw it in the bandsaw and cut some of these chunks off. Okay, that's a wrap for this episode. I think I'm out of time. But for those awesome viewers who are still watching, here's a little sneak uh, tip. Here's a little, uh, here's a little uh, sneak peek. I am working on a version of a saw, not a band saw, I'm not sure what, I think it might be a friction saw. It's gonna be an automated uh, saw. So it's gonna cut a part like this, index over automatically and cut it down again. They'll use Arduino, motors, maybe pneumatics, should be awesome. So, uh, so stay tuned for more folks. I'll be back with part three. And uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please comment below and like it. Otherwise, take care folks, see you soon.